Second Lieutenant Bertie Carr, just three weeks out of training, prepares his troop for a major advance on Taliban positions. It's my intent to occupy the key terrain of Roshan Hill, unknown left, and to hold this ground and protect friendly forces from the enemy threat to the north. At the commando training base in Britain, 924 recruit troop are themselves just weeks away from deployment to Afghanistan. But Adam Collins, a former stuntman, shocks everyone with a highly damaging allegation against his training team. For the past few months, it's been absolute hell, and questions have got to be asked. It's got to be something wrong. The Royal Marines at Kajaki in southern Afghanistan clear a helicopter landing site on the eve of a major attack on an enemy mountain called Sparrowhawk. The main effort ultimately remains the occupation of Sparrowhawk east and west. Bertie Carr is part of the Royal Marine effort to defend the strategically vital Kajaki Dam and hydroelectric power plant from a Taliban desperate to control it. Surrounded on all four sides, the British must dominate the high ground. They already hold two of the highest peaks. They now intend to take a third, called Sparrowhawk. The Royal Marines are the main force in the area, but are supported by various pro-government Afghanis. There's quite a few players here. There's the Afghan National Police, the Afghan National Army. There's uh, the uh, Helmand Security Force, which is a local militia. Um, and uh, so they're all, they're all on site, they're all here to protect the dam and, and extend the sort of security. And just to achieve what you need to achieve, you all need to work together, so... Yeah, they're, they're friendly. They're very friendly, yeah. The first time I went up on that first patrol, a man puts his hand on my face and says, uh, I would sacrifice myself and all my men before I would let you lose a hair from your head. And uh, this is me, first patrol out. Um, haven't come under contact yet, but you know, it's still all a bit sort of new to me, and uh, you don't really know what to say to match it. You know? oh, thank you, uh, I think. <laughs> but that's how they do things. You know, their their friends are their great friends, but they're great people. They're very very welcoming. Just uh, at the moment, though, this area is so complicated and messed up that it's a it's just a shame. This goes. Oh. Back at the commando training base at Limpston in Devon, 924 recruit troop continues to shrink as recruits get injured or fail to meet standards. Of the original 50, only 18 now remain. Those that hope to make it through training, like former stuntman Adam Collins, will be deployed to Afghanistan within two months. A bit eerie, you know, when you start reading it, you think, Jesus, when we finish, that's actually what we're going to be doing. It looks like they need our help out there. Well, they need all the help they can get, don't they? Last ten seconds. Got the Adam is desperate to become one of the Royal Marine elite because of the boost it will give him when he eventually returns to stunt work. But so far, it's not going quite according to plan for him. Remember, fellas, you are trying to be Royal Marine commandos. Bust seven. As with anyone who falls short, he has to pay the penalty. Kick your legs back, Collins. Kick them back. Kick them back both at the same time. Bastard 12! Bastard 10! Bastard, Bastard 30! Come on, open your legs! Big and jump out! Big jump out! Not out, out! That is now your new rifle. It's covered in rust. Clean it then. <laughs> Some of the shit really gets me down. Like, sometimes I just want to rap and just go in and get a fucking normal job and like, leave all this fucking getting cold shit. The fact is, Adam Collins is only just hanging on to his place in the troop. Collins is getting a dotted outline. He's filling up from the bottom rapidly. 
And we can just join a little bit to it each time, can't we? I, I think I'll do his boots as I'll well. I'll do it halfway up. Join up with the waist. He's had a shocking few weeks. Poor shooting. Oh, General he attitude. Gym, he? he wants to be a stuntman. Yeah. And he's here to what? help his stuntman training, not because he wants to be a commando. Down. And it shows when it's cold and wet, he's just uh, not happy. It it's difficult for me because my end goal isn't to be a Royal Marine. So it makes it, you know, when the, t the times are like really shit, it makes it hard to <clears throat> stay motivated when you know that it's not what you really want in the end. I mean, it's all very well when, when he wants to mess about and play rugby with a water bottle, he's the fittest he's man the in man, the troop. But when he sticks me on his back, and rough. get him on the road, and, you know, when it's raining, then the uh, uh, when it starts start. happening, and you just don't want to hear it. But he it's thinks he's like an action man, doesn't he? Fucker. He thinks he's action man. I'm not saying he's not going to make it. He might just suddenly turn it around. But I think the way we treated him in the first couple of weeks it was wasn't beneficial for him as well. Watching him do backflips off stuff, and and it was hoofing. I wish I could back flip off the top of a land roll, but I can't. No, I can't. Just telling him he was hoofing that week one probably wasn't a good thing. Got a bad bit of entertainment? Yeah. Blessed are you, our God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. In Kajaki, Bertie and some of his troops celebrate Holy Communion. In the briefing room, Marty Collins, the company commander, explains his strategy against the Taliban to pro-government Afghanis. My overall intent is to expand the area that the government of Afghanistan dominates and influences. I'll remind you that my men were deployed here to improve the security situation here and specifically to create the conditions that would help the construction around the dam to restart. And where the Taliban want to stop us, we'll fight. At the dam, one of the turbines is kept operating by a few loyal and courageous employees who often run the gauntlet of Taliban fighters just to get to work. The problem here is um, every time they come to the checkpoint, uh, the Taliban are holding them back, pretending to search the vehicle for, for extra um, time, and then they're actually firing at the British, knowing that the reaction that they get from us is that we're going to fire back the right to defend ourselves. And what they're trying to do is to get us to kill one of these, and then they can say, look, the British are killing innocent people. And you can see these people, you know, again, they're very friendly, they're well on side, and you can understand their concerns. As with all wars, innocents can so easily get caught in the crossfire. All I ask for you is that when you are going to have a shift change, that you speak to us, and I will do my bit, and I will tell our guys on the top of the hill, you see that black M vehicle, please hold your fire, even if we get shot at, OK, until they've actually crossed the line. We're here at the end of the day to get the security and to hopefully make your job secure, but also your families to come back here and work here. I must apologise because I cannot explain all my plans or they will become widely known. I must ask you to trust me when I ask you to provide men. To start with, I just need ten people to turn up this time tomorrow. We have guns and we have very fit men, but without the knowledge and the Afghan voice that you guys provide, we do not have any strength at all. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Now let us offer each other a sign of peace. peace <laughs> <laughs> At the 924 Troop Notice Board, Orlando Rogers puts finishing touches to the half blacked out Adam Collins. Will he see this? Yeah, he'll see this. He knows it's only a bit of light hearted fun, but it's a bit of a kick up the arse as well, you know? He's just wants to be a stunt man, doesn't he? So that's what he thinks it's all about. Knife between the teeth, underwater knife fighting. Uh -huh. Being cold, wet and miserable, Collins. And he's slowly coming around to the idea. But not yet.
Despite his defiance, Adam Collins still fails to impress. I'm trying. It's not like I've lost my drive or anything. I'm still trying really hard, but I keep fucking up a lot this week and last week. It's pissing me off. Really, really bad. Then, Adam is put on official warning by his troop commander. Come in, shut the door. I do. Stand attention in the box. Crook Collins, you are on my warning for one, integrity to Corporal Glanfield. Two, admin, your lack of wet and dry routine that you conducted. Three, your motivation in a map reading stance, your attitude to troop criteria fears, which has been poor and somewhat dramatic. Quite simply, Collins, this is not a film set and you are not performing to the team. That's what I've put. Stop trying to impress the team with showmanship and give us some determination and balls in what you do and you'll come off my warning. OK, you're very much a camp soldier at the minute, Collins. And if you don't sort it out, then you'll be uh, moving to a different troop, OK? okay Collins, you understand how severe all right, the warning system is now, OK? All right, because I think at the moment, sometimes you just take it as a little bit of a fun and joke. All right, so you need to get a grip, a grip of yourself and a grasp and start getting amongst it. OK, come and read this. If you're happy with what I've written, then you'll sign it and you'll try and remedy the things I've put. Things are not looking good for the former stuntman and they're about to get a whole lot worse. The Royal Marines at their base in Kajaki are still preparing for the big assault on Taliban positions in a few days. Not something that seems to be of any concern at all to the Marines' adopted dogs, who have free run of the base. The guys are here will make their way across to Sparrowhawk east and west, which will then give us arcs to view and fire to the north and to the west. The dogs, oblivious that they live in a violent war zone, simply assume that the Royal Marines have been sent to Gajaki to play with them. One of them is called Asbo because he's a complete nuisance. But it's the black one that has won the hearts of the commandos. Yeah, tangy. As you can see, it's not clean. I'll probably be in trouble, I'm not supposed to have dogs, but... He's now a British dog and he's recognised throughout uh, the local population as a British dog. <laughs> yeah. He's got such a good temperament, good set of teeth. He's so soppy. Shake hands? No, not today. In Devon, 924 Troop are on an important tactical exercise called First Base. But Adam Collins, already on thin ice for poor performance, has sustained a knee injury and has had to be left behind. If his knee's not better by the end of the week, he's been told that he'll have to leave 924 Troop for treatment in the remedial hunter company. I think if I went into one, it would finish me. It's depressing enough as it is in this place. Without having to be stuck around people that don't want to be there. I don't want that. So, for the sake of this, it's only a niggling pain. And I can get through any test that he throws at me on Friday. Definitely. Without showing any pain. So, we'll see. I'll look after Yeah, I will. Rest. <laughs> OK. Whatever happens, Adam is absolutely determined not to leave 924 Troop. In Kajaki, Bertie is heading out on night patrol to visit Afghan police positions in the mountains from which he can monitor enemy activity. But someone's decided he didn't want to be left behind. Bang it! Bang it! For fuck's sake. As Tangi and the patrol move deeper into the mountains, helicopters bring in extra ammunition and reinforcements for Operation Sparrowhawk. Yeah, who's that? Abdul Ali. Yeah. How's it going? You well? Yeah. Good to see you. Ah, Shah Ali. Shah Ali. Shah Ali. Sing it. Shah Ali. No, not really. Yeah. Uh, you have to be very polite because uh, that's the whole part of the custom. You can't just say hello. You sort of ask after after his men, how they are, how he is, how his family is. Um, it's a big process, and uh, and it goes a long way because a lot of their support is just due to the fact that they uh, they like us. After the greetings, Bertie's patrol moves on to their lookout positions. Even Tangi helps keep watch, quite unfazed by the distant gunfire. Tangi, get out of the way. When we took over from the Paras back in September, Tangi was about that big, so it's quite nice, you know, sort of, uh, seeing, seeing him uh, grow up. That's a bit of morale for the lads that look after, look after him. But he's also bloody annoying and uh, insists on coming out on every patrol. Maybe 
Shield 2 Alpha. Yeah, there's a lot of gunfire in kind the of region of the north northeast century. Over. Thank you. Go on, stop it, stop it, stop it. You're going out, Roger. Two jet Alpha, that's all. Out. Tangy. You're disgusting. Bertie and his 11 troop continue to monitor the enemy positions firing into the night. And Tangy? Well, it's been a long day. In Devon, bad news for Adam Collins. Although he passed his medical, he's been kicked out of 924 Troop anyway for missing exercise first base and being demoted to a more junior troop. Two other recruits who also missed the exercise have not been back trooped, and Adam is convinced that he's been victimised and written a formal letter of complaint. I have numerous examples of how I have been subjected to bullying by the training team. However, my main concern at this stage is that I feel I've been singled out for back trooping and wish only to return to my troop. I only ask that I be, may be treated in the same manner as others in my position. Yours respectfully, Recruit Collins. We here at the Commando Training Centre, especially we've been training, dealing with young people uh, of all backgrounds, uh, take this very seriously. A lot of the time, there'll, there'll be no case to answer. However, it is all fair and above board. Uh, and I'll say, we do take these incidents very seriously. Why are you like Font Support Place? I feel like they've wanted me out of the troop, basically, and they've seen me off. And they, they have been looking for a reason to get me out. And it's just typical of their attitude towards back trooping people. It's almost like a joke to them. Collins. Gone, thank the Lord. To raise issues like this is going to cause animosity between me and the team. And if I was staying in the troop, I would, I would never have done this. But I don't think it's right to just stand by and let it happen. Right, stand up, shake your arms out. Because there's going to be others. Right, fall in. The day comes when the Marines in Kajaki start their long-awaited climb to take Sparrowhawk Mountain. And immediately, the Taliban open fire from the plane below. Two miles away, Bertie, his 11 troop and some government Afghan soldiers dig in on Roshan Hill to protect the northern flank from enemy attack. We've got five Afghan army. You can see them, uh, my guys trying to deal with them without a turp. Richie Rawlins over there. Um, it's quite, quite entertaining. Right now, though, Bertie and his men can only watch on frustrated as the distant firefight rages. At Limston, the results of the investigation into the bullying charges brought by Adam Collins are about to be given to him. All right, do come in and take a seat. Relax, take your berry off. OK. Right, basically, just so you're aware, I've investigated, sought witnesses, made a report, and it's been deemed that your initial allegation of bullying is not to be founded. OK. It is found on investigation that the reason you were back trooped was because you missed an exercise. The case you cite of two of individuals, nothing to do with you. And this is all taken on a case-by-case -case basis. <clears throat> the blacking out of your photograph. OK, I spoke to the troop commander. His explanation of this is that he wanted to give you a bit of a kick up the backside to motivate you to have a better exercise. OK. On Roshan Hill, 11 Troop continues to look on as a battle rages in the distance, learning one of the most frustrating truths of war, that it's 10% action and 90% boredom. If, on this occasions, or any more occasions whilst you're here at CTC, you feel that you have been victimised, bully, harassed or anything else, you must make a complaint as soon as you possibly can. Any more questions from you? Yes, sir. Right. That's me and you finish, young man. Okay. Back to whatever you're doing. Yes, OK? Sir. I knew the outcome of this before I even started, but my intention was only to bring it to the attention of, of others. Yes, 
friendly forces moving through. It's hard for the recruits when they get when they get knocked back. I think we recruit Collins. He wasn't obviously strong enough to just take it on the chin and go. I'm happy. I'm happy with that for whatever reason. Even though um, he might not be happy with the decision, he should respect the fact that we all make professional decisions. We sit down, we have meetings about them, and make the decisions. So when he made these allegations, it pissed us off to be quite frank. I mean, we give all our best to the recruits. You know, training's hard at times, but if we if we do something, it's for a reason. If we're shouting at them, if we, if we tell them to do something again, if we give them a bollock, if we thrash them, or if we're kind to them, it's all for a reason. It's all to get them to the stage where they'll take up a position as a Royal Marine in, in a rifle unit. Right, that's 50-50. Fresh mag on. I think the main problem that I've had with the training team is that I see them as men, not as ranks. Uh, although I have respect for what they've done and who they are, um, to me they're still men. I have to speak to them as men and I think they're not used to that. I think they're just used to yes sir, no sir. Show your weapons a point in safe direction. Unload! I'm not trying to be confrontational with them, but I like to have an answer. If I feel like I'm being treated unfairly or if something's not right, I like to find out why. And that's exactly what I've done here. So, training to be a Royal Marine Commando has its own extreme pressures and frustrations. But so too does being on the front line itself, as 11 Troop are finding out. They've watched action at a distance all day and have yet to fire a shot in anger. Sir? Yeah? A course one and only ammunition <laughs> and casualty count. Is, is that from Pete? I don't know. Tell them the whole troop, OK, ammo, none. No change. No change. Fucking... <laughs> well, been is that a fight? A pitched battle all day. That's a fight, isn't it? That's rubbing <laughs> in, isn't it? <laughs> what have you lads been up to all day? Any casualties? <laughs> Need any ammo? No, you fuckers, we've been doing nothing. 